Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington at Jaher on Twitter. And today we're gonna to take a look and see if SWC and ES Build can really give you the time and money savings that they're advertised to do by making your compile times that much faster. So this is mainly gonna be a review of my findings, but there's a whole bunch of shared code that I'm gonna give you that you can play with and it's pretty fun. So what are we going to be comparing? We're going to be comparing the TypeScript compiler, which is written in JavaScript, the Babel compiler, which is written again in JavaScript, the SWC compiler written in Rust, and then the ES build compiler written in Go. And to do that, we have a simple set of projects for you. And we'll start off with the most simple one. So this is a library project. And we've got a single .ts file in here that has a class that is unimplemented. And this is probably the smallest thing you could build. Now in a TypeScript world, you'd probably just compile it like this. You bring in TypeScript as a dev dependency and then you do TSC to build the file. So let's see how long that takes by doing time yarn build. So that takes about 1.45 seconds on my machine. This is actually the total number that we're gonna be using for comparison, so 1.354. Now, how do you do that in ES build? Let's take a look again at our package.json. In this case, we still have TypeScript and we also have ES build. And then instead of TSC, we're using ES build. We're giving it the source directory dot slash source. And then we're giving it the output directory where we want to go. So let's go time that one. That took 0 0.31 seconds. So compare that again to this 1.354. It's about a second worth of savings just on this tiny little file. So some pretty impressive savings there. Now let's go take a look at SWC and see how that works in this context. And we'll take a look at our package.json. Here we bring in two packages. We bring in the CLI and we bring in the core. And then from there we can just say, hey, I wanna do SWC against the source and put the output in the disk directory. Now let's go see how long that takes. That takes 0 0.447. And that's certainly better than the 1.3 seconds that we got with TSC, but these are all relative measures because your numbers may vary depending on the machine that you're running on. I'm running on a 2019 MacBook Pro. You may be running on a VM, so the numbers may vary drastically, but the percentages are probably gonna be remain about the same. All right, so I'm gonna go introduce you to my spreadsheet where I stored all these numbers. Again, all of this is available to you. There's a spreadsheet link in the description and all the code is linked to also in the description. So this is the library project. And so you, we can see that we're getting an 80% savings with ES build and a 33% savings with SWC. I didn't really think that was a great test, a single file. That's not really what the kind of thing that you'd want to optimize with a different compiler and spend all the time doing that. But you might want to do that in the case of a very large project. So I had to go and create a very large project that I called Pathologic. And why did I call it Pathologic? Well, it's, it's just kind of silly. So we'll go over here to our library Pathologic, go to our starter, and we can see that it's just 808 different Pokemon components generated from a Pokemon data file, which is, pretty cool uh, and i've used this again in, in multiple scenarios the server over here is actually showing you what this looks like it's actually kind of neat i guess but it's not all that practical but it does represent a very large project set so what are the numbers looking like in that case so we can see that the baseline here for tsc is an 11 second compile but es build has remained essentially flat at about 0 0.23 seconds which means you get a 97% savings in terms of compile time. Disagree. And a similar kind of thing with SWC, again, pretty much almost flat at 0 0.79, maybe even a little less, which gives you a 92% savings. So if you have these library type situations, I think using one of these two is just fantastic and there's really no downside to it. Then I decided to take a look at web stuff. So I started with create React app or CRA, and I just have an off-the-shelf starter. It literally has an empty app.tsx file in it, just says hello. And the numbers that I got on that were really confusing. That's not supposed to happen. So the baseline yarn build time to go and build that project for release mode came in at about 4.17 seconds on my machine. So for ES build and SWC, I used Krakow. Now Krakow allows you to go override 
the CRA defaults and bring in your own stuff. In this case, they're bringing in ES Build and SWC, and the installations are actually really simple. You just bring in Krakow ES Build, and then Krakow, and then you have a configuration file where you bring that plugin, and then you just use that plugin. So I made sure that it was running, and the results that I got were kind of weird, actually, in the case of a very small project. It actually took more time with ES Build, about 50% more, and about 80% more build time with SWC. So I don't really know what's going on there. So I wanted to kind of dig into it a little bit more. So I brought in all of those pathologic components, and the numbers started to equalize a little bit. So the build time for the baseline, which is really just Babel, was about 70 seconds. And then ES build was about 4% less than that, 5% less than that. And SWC was about 5% more than that. So there's a whole lot going on here that isn't just the compilation, which is really important. So I was like, hmm, okay, well, if CRA is giving me problems, then maybe I can take a look at Next.js because one of the things that got me on this hunt was the recent release of Next.js 11.1, which was advertised as having SWC, or at least I thought it was advertised as doing SWC. So I created a Next.js 10 project and an equivalent Next.js 11.1 and ran it, and wouldn't you know, the numbers are exactly the same. So I went back to that press release and I was like, hey, isn't there SWC in here? And it turns out that this is more just a press release for 11.1. They're working on integrating SWC and they will share more results of that adoption as we go on, but SWC isn't currently in 11.1. So eh, eh, Next.js, not a fair comparison on this one. I mean, you could go and integrate it yourself, but I kind of wanted to look for off the shelf solutions. So I know Webpack 5 myself, so I used my Webpack 5 starter kit to get a baseline of a very simple Webpack 5 configuration and how it might fare. So let's go take a look at how that's integrated because I think it's actually kind of interesting. So over here in our Webpack config for Webpack 5, normally we would just have Babel Loader. And in the case of ES Build, instead of Babel Loader, we bring in ES Build Loader. And in the case of SWC, we bring in SWC loader and you get some options and things like that. So yeah, pretty easy stuff. So how do they perform? Well, let's go take a look. So the baseline of Webpack 5 was about four seconds. And with the ES build version, we saved about 18% off that. Dropped down significantly. SWC dropped down a little bit less, but still good stuff. And then I brought in the much larger pathologic data set and that clocked in at about 12 seconds to build that using Babel and about seven seconds to build that using ES build and about eight seconds to build that using SWC, which is an appreciable savings. So I think as your Webpack 5 projects grow, this is definitely something you should be taking a look at. Of course, I didn't stop there. I also wanted to take a look and see if I could get this done on Rollup and I could to a certain degree. So, Let's go check that out. Over here, we have the starter package for rollup where we bring in just simple TypeScript for the basic one. And then we've got the ES build version, which is just bringing in ES build in the rollup plugin. And there's some configuration around that, but you know, it, this is all documented. Again, all of these projects are there available for you on that GitHub repo. So let's see how rollup did. So on the baseline, meaning just a simple single component application, it's about four seconds to build and about two seconds to build with ES build. So wow, that's a pretty good savings right there of 31%. And then on the pathologic case with the tons of Pokemon components, about 18 seconds to build that uh, in baseline and then five seconds with ES build. So really good stuff. The reason that I didn't have SWC on this is that SWC I couldn't get the integration to work with Rollup. If you can get that working, please let me know and I'll add it to this spreadsheet. Really appreciate that. So as you can see, there's some real benefits to using ES Build and SWC. There's definite time savings both at the build side, which is really important when it comes to CI CD. For example, I know these numbers look small when it comes to rates of money, but 
trust me, they add up. If you've got a CI CD where you're doing a preview on every single PR and you're doing bills on every single PR, you get a lot of minutes going and these numbers will add up. And the sim similar sort of things with any kind of these vendors, the Circle CI, although their numbers are a little bit more hidden behind credits and things like that, but it's a similar kind of thing. You really wanna make sure that your build times stay as low as they can so you can get all the value out of that those preview builds. They'll build faster for you, the cycle time will be faster, and you'll pay less money, which is great. And all of these benefits also go to development time. I know I did a lot on build here, but it's also the same for your dev time. When you hit do fast refresh, it's going to be that much faster. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section down below. I love responding to your comments and I know YouTube loves to see your comments as well. Of course, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new one of these videos comes out. Whew. A lot of research on that one. Oy. Regexes. Know your regexes. See you next time.